G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard, thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show, like, comment, and subscribe, and yes, you are here today because you're probably a southerner, and you have just enjoyed the clean sweep over the northerners from the rugby championship teams plus Fiji, right, I was gonna say southerners clean sweeping the northerners, but some of you smart ass in the comments on the weekend pointed out that Tonga lost and some other team in the southern hemisphere lost, and uh, yeah, so I can't actually say a clean sweep for the southerners, but hey, Rugby Championship clean sweep is pretty good for me, especially, especially the little tier two nation, right? The little tier two nation that in 1776, Captain James Cook came to this little nation and he looked at the rugby team here and he said, there is no talent, I see. And he wrote uh, in his, you know, in his report to the queen or whatever. And he wrote that there is no talent in this land. So we shall call it talent nullius, right? And the land of talent nullius has showed Captain James Cook that we have talent, we just need $9 million to buy them, right? And uh, sure enough, we upset the English at Twickenham on the weekend, <laughs> Allianz Stadium, by the way. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, you know, there, there's gonna be a lot of media saying, Joseph Swally, you did really, really good. I thought he did, did pretty pretty decent, to be fair. And I have to issue an apology to, uh, to probably Joe Schmidt. I doubted his selections when he was talking about, you know, Joseph Swally, he, Debuting building towards Lions tour. I was starting to get Eddie Jones vibe on the week uh, last week And I was seriously concerned about the overall performance of this game, but hey, uh, you know, Joseph, you know Joe Joe Schmidt is indeed a world-class international test coach. He has Drastically drastically improved the, the performance of every player uh, on the field uh, on the weekend And that was something that yeah, I was I have to say sorry Joe Schmidt. I doubted your abilities and um, yeah, I was I was very very proud of the performance from every player on the field, especially in the forwards, Harry Wilson, uh, Jeremy Williams, uh, you know uh, Angus Bell in the back line, Lane Kittel did extremely well, Tom Wright extremely good, uh, Dylan Peach was really good as well. Uh, and in addition to Joe Swalley's, you know, massively talked about debut, I thought that you know you know. Um, yeah, I thought that was really, really good overall, and I do have to apologize to Joe Schmidt for doubting his selections or doubting his ability to actually improve upon the team that was left over by Eddie Jones. Sir Eddie, right? So yeah, that was that was really, really good, and I have to eat a big, massive piece of humble pie after that. But hey, you are here today because the world Rugby World Rankings has shifted left and right, up and down quite a bit over the weekend. So uh, first up, the number one ranked team in the world, the world champions, the mighty Springboks has regained the number one position. In, in the hands of uh, of, um, of of the mighty All Blacks, actually. So All Blacks has been in Ireland, um, really bumped Ireland down quite a bit because this was a home game for Ireland and All Blacks move up to the second place and South Africa also beating Scotland, uh, retained the, uh, you know, moved up to number one already after Ireland lost and then retained that position after um, beating uh, Scotland as well. Argentina, massive move up in, in the game, absolutely thumped Italy on the weekend. 50 points to 16, I think the score was. Uh, yeah, Argentina thumped Italy 50 points to 6, uh, 18, and this was, again, I did watch, I did not do a review, I thought I'd talk about it a little bit here. Uh, this was a game where Thomas Abono was really, really good, and you can see Argentina wanted to play rugby, wanted to play that, you know, passing style of rugby, and they didn't want to just kick goals, whereas Italy walked into the game clearly just wanted to kick three points, and it, it got to a point where you kind of started to, to see the maths didn't add up, uh, Italy was getting three points and it, uh, Argentina was scoring seven in return. And then eventually you just, yeah, the game just completely blown out for Italy. And um, yeah, it's just, I just think that the Argentinian teams team is just such a huge improvement from that, what they were last year. And uh, Felipe Contempomi is just, again, showing that the team has galvanized around him. Uh, the talents, you know, we had this issue last year where Argentina do really well and then just fall off a cliff in the subsequent games, and that's completely kind of like, seems to be completely out of this system, uh, which was really good. The other game that was really good on the weekend was Fiji versus Wales. Uh, the game looked like it was going to be a blowout for like Wales. So there was two, uh, there was yellow cards everywhere from the French referee. Referee, that was a red card to send me Radrandra. It was only a 20 minute red card. About Fiji was able to stabilize the situation despite having uh, two players in the bin at one point. There was one, Tommy Raphael was yellow carded for Wales as well. So it was looking like it was going to be a runaway, but then the game kind of stabilized in the second half. Uh, really, really performance by Caleb Munts with his goal kicking. I did say that Caleb Munts, in my preview, is probably going to be a better goal kicker than Anscombe. And sure enough, the Fijians was able to control the game, uh, kick the points that was offered to them. <clears throat> 
and eventually edge out a historic win, 24 points to 19. And uh, Warren Gallen has got a lot to think about, including potentially uh, there was people talking about potentially him being sacked going to the Six Nations. <clears throat> So yeah, with that being said, Scotland did actually go up one point because of England's loss, despite losing to South Africa, uh, England losing to Australia. Obviously, the talent Narnius has showed the English that Captain James Cook was wrong, you know, since 1776. And uh, yeah, the England team, uh, I think Joseph Swally, I didn't watch the post-match. I think Joseph Swally got man of the match. I actually thought uh, Marcus Smith deserved the man of the match because he was the only player that was keeping the English in the game. And I thought the, you know, the 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 overall England mentality is still there. I think probably left over from Eddie Jones, maybe even going back 20 years, is the fact that once England got ahead of Australia, they just wanted to kick the ball in your half and not play rugby. Just wanted to run the clock down. And they eventually giving the, you know, the, the, you know, the one thing that, you know, the, 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 I thought was really funny. England got a line out. That was, that was like in the last 10 minutes. Uh, that was like 10 minutes, 10 meters into the Australian half. That's a pretty good spot for pretty much any international test team. If you get a line out inside the opposition half, 10 meters in, it's pretty prime spot uh, for, for an opportunity there. You can see the England players did not want to do this line out. And sure enough, uh, George Ford threw a, a loose ball and Andrew Calloway scooped up for an intercept try. But it was like, you can tell the England players did not want to play rugby at that point. And it was, you can just see the people's faces. And sure enough, that line out, despite in the prime location, England just fumbled the ball. And leading to you know it wasn't the, the end of the the game but leading to an intercept try that was that was pretty pretty poorly executed so wallabies move up from the ninth place to eight fiji moved in from 10 uh move up to ninth from 10th after beating wales and then italy dropped from eight to ten after losing to argentina so fiji moving up mostly because of italian dropping rather than the actual points gained from wales because the points from that was very, very little. So yeah, we uh, let's look at some other results. Japan losing to France, 52-12. Uh, 15-32, Scotland losing to uh, to the Springboks. Uh, 42-37, Wallabies. And uh, the mighty All Blacks, 23-13 over Ireland. Oh yeah, did I miss one? Uh, no, that's it. And then, uh, yeah, so history making at Cardiff for the Fijians. This was the first time the Fijians beat beat um beat Wales in in Wales and outside the rugby world cup they only ever beat Wales one time in 2000 and, uh 2007 rugby world cup in the pool stage that was the only one so this is uh, basically the only time they've beaten Wales outside of the uh, world cup cycle uh <clears throat> on the weekend also there was a, a, a clear shift in emphasis of a fair challenge in rugby the the law has been kind of adjusted to allow for the high balls to be more contestable. Uh, there has been a little bit, I thought it was, you know, I thought that it was, you know, people kind of complain about these sort of high ball strategies. And I thought the fact that people were able to protect the receiver by just kind of like standing the way and, you know, obviously not deliberately taking players out, but just, you know, blocking the access to the player by, you know, running towards your own player. I thought that was actually a, a kind of like a shift away from the kicking game, but World Rugby did not like that. So they have, basically said you cannot block the access to the to the to, the, to your own receiver and uh, allowing a fair contest we saw that a number of penalties were given out uh in multiple games of the weekend because of this little little law change uh scott cummings had received a yellow card for a landing on someone's leg after a croc roll i think he landed on uh who was it was it uh one of the springbok players i can't remember his name uh, but yeah so so yeah, he was the red card. The, the yellow card was upgraded to a red. Very minor. People say it didn't cause any injuries, but still a red. Uh, the, the it's quite dangerous move. The, the the committee has reviewed it afterwards and decided it was going to be a two week ban and suspended by fifty percent due to good good previous behavior. So he's just down to one week suspension for the neck roll and landing on the leg. Semi Rajendra, however, is on the unlucky side of the. The, the decision there on the on the referee, he did get a red card for uh, running in at full speed and then head on shoulder on, uh, I think, the Welsh winger. One of the new guys, I can't remember his name as, as well on top of my head. But yeah, Simeon Rondrandra, uh, he was upgraded to a red, 20 minute red card. It's, it's getting six weeks suspension and getting a 50% mitigation. So he's getting a three week suspension. He's getting a three, three week suspension uh, for the 
for the shot. A uh, bit of a bit of interesting. He did have time to adjust his body height and then just kind of went straight shoulder tucked on the head as well. Uh, Scotland Rugby reported this week as well from the financial reports. Now, you know, I like to pretend that I am a Wall Street analyst, but I am not. Uh, you know, that's I, I like to, you know, pretend that I know what I'm, uh, you know, pr pretend that, uh, that, that, that um, I can understand financial statements when I can barely read English. So, yeah, I uh, had a look at the, the financial reports. Why is this so awkward? Can I just close this? Here we go. <clears throat> so, yeah, I had a look at the financial report. The Scotland Rugby has reported a massive loss last year. Despite it being a Rugby World Cup year, they reported a 11.3 million deficit and they're expecting another three next year and then break even the year after. So uh, it's, to me, I think that's very unlikely. The forecast, is, yeah, this is a very rosy forecast for them. Um, we'll have to see because going through their financial statement, it's surprising to me that the professional rugby part, which is the URC business, is losing a lot of money for Scotland. They're spending, you know, twenty-eight million dollar million pound a year to keep the profession to keep the clubs running. Yeah, they're only getting um, like thirty million in revenue uh, the last year, even though there's an increase of three three million from the year before. It's still not nearly enough to catch up for the for the overall cost of keeping. The basically the, the the URC teams run. Despite that, uh, uh, Scotland won the URC. You know Edinburgh was it Edinburgh that won the URC. Glasgow, no Glasgow Warriors won won the URC. They're still financially uh, unviable. So I had a little bit of look through the through the through the through the statements, and I uh, did find a little bit of red flag. Um, and I think that maybe someone need to to have a look into this and give us a bit of a understanding. So. Scotland Rugby has decided to, to partner with the venture capital firms. Uh, I, I guess it's not Scotland Rugby, but there's some venture capital investments into Scotland Rugby. Basically, Scotland Rugby has sold the revenue streams for the URC and the Six Nations to private equity firms. So as we stated here, so they have sold um, one into the URC, URC, which benefit our pro team. And then one into the Six Nations, which concluded in uh, 2021 to 2020. Well, so two finish. Uh, so basically, what they've done is the, instead of giving the getting the upside of the URC, they basically capped themselves. They just sold. They just taken that like a lump, couple of lump big lump sums, fixed lump sums for the for, for for the for four years essentially, and then they just sold the upside essentially whatever you get in top to the private equity firms. And you end up in a situation where, yes, they are getting guaranteed money. Like so, so there, there was a, a table that showing the Six Nation deal where they were getting seven, seven point four million guaranteed cash every year, but the upside has gone to the uh, to the private equity firms. So whatever, if if the Six Nations makes twenty million, uh, that was supposed to go to Scotland. All of that additional money goes to the private equity. Same with the URC deal, where the upside goes to the to the to the to the to the to the private equity. But the, the, there's a fixed payment to the to the Scotland Rugby uh, to cover the so so, the, so so if the downside will be will be will be will be will be avoided. And I just think that you know that's one of the reasons that I don't see Scotland Rugby is going to turn around because you have already capped your return. You, you've already sold the upside. So even if URC do really well next next year, you're not going to get a massive increase in your revenue because of of this venture capital. Uh, deal so your cost is going to keep going up but your your revenue is still capped so i just don't see how you're going to bridge the gap you, 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 you've you've capped your revenue uh, you've capped your upside so yeah I, I i don't know i understand how they could have come to the decision when everything is uncertain coming out of covid and everything but you know it's it's again just i think yeah some of these business decisions kind of leave, leaving you scratching your head uh, and it depends on how many, I think it's, it's like four years or something. So all the upside from the URC are, are going to be going to a private equity firms. And that's kind of like the danger uh, of the firm. And just by the way, Scotland Rugby is left with only about 10 million pounds in the bank after the 11 million deficit. So yeah, it's not looking good. They can't sustain another 11 million loss next year or uh, well, this year. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, 
a little bit of a tight situation they're sitting in. Yeah, so so they're down to thirteen million uh in in uh in cash reserves, I guess, equities uh at the end of the year. So they can only buy one Joseph Swali'i, one and a half Joseph Swali'i, I guess, with that money. And that's that's about it, right? Um so yeah, the, with that being said, Scotland Rugby still has a big game coming up this weekend. And uh, let's have a look at the game this weekend, actually, just quickly. Uh, Scotland is playing. Uh, Scotland is playing um, Portugal. Not really that massive, but they have a couple injuries uh, for this weekend. So they got um, Jack Dempsey and uh, what's his name? Uh, Gregor Brown have both been ruled out of the weekend due to uh, head injuries, I believe, and. Um, yeah, so they're all there's a couple of players out, but it's not going to be too big of an issue against Portugal. Uh, so yeah, Joseph Swali, hype. We're going to talk about this. Um, much better than I was expecting, but the price tag I still think is just too high. There's so many players that Australian rugby needs to keep just to bolster the overall product of the Super Rugby. And you can't just have you know one player uh, doing the national team. And also, there's a little bit of concern for me. If you put too much egg in one basket, what if he comes out and do a do something like you know a Israel Falau, and suddenly you're gonna leave with a lot of um, hurt feelings at the end of the end of the end of the deal, right? So you, you just never want to put all your eggs in one basket. I really have to recognize some of the other players that's doing a lot of good work in the background as well. Uh, big injury to the world as well. Dylan Peach has been left. Uh, out going home and George Fluke has been caught into the squad from the uh, Wallabies A team. So Fluke might go to center and Swalley might go to the wing after this. Uh, we'll have to see how the shuffle goes around. Uh, so there was a big name leaving Australia. So Sulu Asi Vinavalu, the other rugby league convert, um, has been let go by Rugby Australia to pursue in France and is currently rumored going to La Rochelle with, you know, playing alongside of. Uh, Will Skelton, he's not going back to rugby league, which is kind of good. So yeah, he will be going to um, going to leave Australia despite the contract had him in play to 2025. So he's uh, he's let go early. Uh, James O'Connor has knocked back the deal. Obviously, we know this to play for the Crusaders. And um, there's another one that was lost for the Reds. It's Jordan Patea. He's going to try out uh, NFL to follow 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 his dreams with more money with um, Rhys Zammit, I guess. And, you know, they're, they're talking about centers. Jordan Patea was debut against England as in, outside center for under Michael Checker. So there's another center that Rugby Australia has let go in the cost of Joseph Swali'i. Yeah. Uh, so England Rugby has a couple of head injuries as well. I Actually, I think the Scotland Rugby players are not head injuries. But England Rugby did get injuries. So Tom Curry and Emmanuel Faiwan Boso both suffered uh, concussions. I think the Scotland Rugby had a... Anyway, uh, so both of them will be missing out, especially... To everybody's disappointment, uh, Tom Curry is not going to have a reunion with Bongi Bonabi this weekend. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of a disappointment for a lot of the fans. Uh, a bit of an update for Springboks injury. Steven Kitsi, Kitsov, has, uh, is booked in for a neck surgery. So he's a bit of a neck injury uh, that's keeping him out of the, the game. Uh, Ruan Nokia has been ruled out on, over the week during a bit of a training issue. And the John Clang, another massive, massive World Cup winning Guy has been caught up into the match uh, to finish off the series in place of Ran Nokia. Uh, there was a so the post match against Scotland, the Springboks was not looking happy. Excuse me, and I think that one of the key issues is that whilst yes the Springboks did win with dominant scrummaging, I think that is not that is kind of like the backup 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 desperation plan to win the game. Like you try to eke out penalties with scrummaging. Uh, I think that Springboks wanted to have more control over the game, especially uh, early on, and uh, really don't have to go to that desperation uh, mode of you know going to the scrummaging and try to try to eke out penalties to win the match uh, style. And I think that uh, Rassi was not happy about the overall performance. Pretty hard criticism. I uh, think that they're not yeah playing a bit nervous, a bit proud. But also they got England coming up this weekend. They can't let the players be too complacent. I think. Razi is probably playing a bit of a mind game there. I saw with his own player base to try to get everyone, uh, you know, everyone uh, mentally prepared for the big matchup against England this weekend. 
Uh, so speaking of England, there was a pretty poor performance by George Ford once again. The, you know, the, the intercept pass to the side. Yeah, really com considering Marcus Smith was the one that did everything that pulled England out of the fire uh, time and time and time again. There's some argument that George Ford don't need to be in the squad anymore. So who are they going to bring in in addition to cover Marcus Smith? You need somebody, right? I mean, Owen Farrell is not available. So it's, uh, it really, yeah, you may have to, yeah, I don't know. Some some England fans might tell me who they're going to be able to bring in in addition, in addition uh, to replace George Ford. But uh, yeah, it is cons it is not that great, to be honest. His performance on the weekend once again. Uh, Wiles uh, have made some changes going into this week against the Wallabies. Uh, there's some injuries as well. Mason Grady, Grady uh, Ellis Bevan have been um, promoted to the starting place in, uh, in place of the Thomas Williams. Uh, had a shoulder injury. Some changes back line. James Botham and Jack Morgan comes in for Tim Plumtree and Tommy Raphael. And um, yeah, uh, there's a what, 10 win losing streak now for for uh, sorry, 10 game losing streak now for Wales looking to turn it around against the Wallabies. It's going to be yeah, hopefully the Wallabies don't don't fall fall out and do you know, keep the consistency up and build into another win this weekend. Uh definitely the easier game than England, but um yeah, I think Wales will be looking at potentially especially with knowing 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 Warren Gallen and his yeah, knowing Warren Gallen, he might put on a, a bit of a different game power plan following the July tests, uh, information he got from the July test uh, going to this weekend. Uh, Argentina, we're going to talk about this. Massive wing over Italy. Uh, Tomas Abono, extremely good at 10 once again. Uh, 50, 58 points to 18 over Italy. Uh, so Argentina has announced the team this weekend for Ireland, the big, 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 big match and big, big, big return of my favorite player from Argentina, Pablo Matera. And um, yeah, his return to, to the Argentina fold. Let's quickly go through the lineup. Uh, so Argentina coming number one, Tomas Gaggio, Julian Montea, Joe Scovi number three, uh, Guido Petty number four, number five, Pedro Robiolo uh, for Argentina. Number six in the open side flanker position, Pablo Matera, uh, Juan Martin Gonzalez comes in number seven, and Joaquin Oviedo comes in number eight. Now, a very different, uh, you know, Forwards nowadays, I suppose last year from Argentinian side. Number nine, Gonzalo Betrano. And number 10, Thomas Alberno. Again, well, since he taken over the turn jersey, has just been really lighting Argentina on fire. Uh, Felipe Contepomi backing him, despite him costing Argentina's only loss so far this year, uh, This year, I think. Is it not, is it only lost? At least only lost in the rugby championship. Uh, no, he, they lost the, the Springboks. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the loss against the Wallabies, uh, he backed him. To, to to perform and he really delivered for his coaching stuff. Uh, Batista Del Goy coming number eleven, number twelve. Matias Moroni uh, ahead, you know, ahead of the injured. Uh, Chaco Barres number thirteen. Lucio Sinti number fourteen. Rodrigo is uh, Isco and number fifteen. Juan Cruz uh, Malia to finish off the starting fifteen in the back uh, in the reserves. Ignacio Ruiz coming number sixteen. Ignacio Calles number seventeen and Franco Gomez Cordella. Uh, number 18, number 19, Franco Molia, number 20, Santiago Cordona, number 21, Gonzalo Garcia, and number 22, Santiago Carreras, number 23, Justin Picardo, finishing off for uh, for the Argentina. Gonzalo Garcia Azus, Jesus is his middle name. And uh, for for the final uh, for the for the for the for the for the All Blacks on the weekend, uh, obviously massive upset in Dublin. And um, yeah, Riku Yawani doing the haka was pretty awesome. The uh, This was, I think, a lot of people were saying in the comments after the game that Ireland played badly. I don't think Ireland played badly, to be honest. I just think that the All Blacks played a much more, much better game than we've seen uh, this year. This was the best All Blacks performance. Really left no opportunities for the uh, for the Irish to do anything, really, this game. Uh, the Ireland did do everything they could to try to capture the yellow card period with Geordie Barrett, but they yeah they weren't able to really extend that lead uh, to their likings, and I think the All Blacks yeah just played play better, a lot fewer penalties, better discipline, better handling overall, and uh, Ireland was just left a little bit. I think yeah again you, you know left a little bit of um uh, left lacking a little bit of energy. I think uh, in the end of that game and the big big matchup All Blacks versus France this weekend. Uh, France had a couple of injuries after their match against a pretty easy match against uh, Japan. 
uh, Franco, Francois Croc and Damien Penold are both out on against uh, the All Blacks. So Penold is probably the biggest loss for the French team. Someone that was could carve up your defensive line at any point of the field. But Anton Dupont returning for the French team. This will be uh, the first massive 15th match for Anton Dupont. He didn't play any Six Nations. Uh, he did win the, the French Professional League. But uh, this will be the big test match that everybody will be waiting to see for Mr. Dupont. The All Blacks had a bit of injury crisis as well. Sam Kane has been ruled out to head injury this weekend. Uh, in addition to, you know, the 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 plethora of All Black loose for injuries. Dalton Pavali, Ethan Blackadder, and Luke Jacobson, Jacobson all out. They have caught up uh, Peter Larkai already. So they're going to have a bunch of... They, they do, they're probably gonna, we're probably going to see... Um, some um, some changes. We're definitely going to see some changes to the to the to Sam Kang, and we might see Peter Lakai getting a um, getting an opportunity for the All Blacks this weekend in the biggest stage of them all. And finally, last bit of news for the All Blacks: uh, Scotty Barrett, Scotty has been dropped from the from, from the Crusaders captaincy. Uh, I mean, Rob Penny, you're surely going to make sure that you're the worst Crusaders coach ever, right? How could you drop Scotty Barrett? And so now that they have confirmed that Scotty Barrett will not be the uh, the the Crusaders captain anymore, and uh, obviously Scotty is the All Blacks captain, so they're gonna have to find someone else to to take over. And there's some you know some guesses left and right. Uh, my guess, my guess is Ethan Blackadder, maybe Cody Taylor could take over the captaincy. But um, knowing 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 it's Rob Penny, it's probably gonna be really 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 stupid. I'm probably gonna name. Let's say David Havili as the captain. All right, that's my guess, right? Let me know your thoughts about the captaincy and who this should be. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys later for the previews. And uh, cheers.